and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing my March wrap up. So this was an interesting month and I didn't finish the last few days of the month, the books that I had wanted to because I didn't want to like rush through them. And I'll explain which books those were and how those will continue into the month of April along with the other April books that I want to read. But one of the main things was that I, I had a lot of hefty books this month and then I had to read some books for work and yeah I just didn't get to as many as I would have liked but I did read all the ones that were on my TBR jar or picked from my TBR jar so that I'm very excited about because that's one of my goals is to expand myself a little bit more with books that maybe I wouldn't have initially picked off my shelf but are still there and I haven't read. So that I thought was a great accomplishment if I might say so. Also this is coming out hopefully while I'm in London. So I'm filming this the day before we leave. We leave tomorrow night at like six o'clock and then we have a layover and then we have a 10 o'clock flight into London. And yeah, I'm gonna try to sleep and not have to worry about filming anything. So I'm filming this a couple days early knowing that there's still some books I could have finished, but I don't know, I didn't wanna rush it and I wanted to get this out in time for you all. So yes, I, I do have some stats and then I have books I want to talk about and yeah this will be a pretty speedy if possible wrap up since I have so many things to do before going to London. One of them is getting my nails done. Not a necessity but like I want to do it and be in theme and in brand and everything so I'm very excited about that. So in terms of books read for the month of March so I have my Chiltern little planner here that I write all of my TBRs, all I've read, my stats, all that kind of stuff and this has been like my own doing. It's not like a, like it's, it's a hand drawn <laughs> a dirt reading journal. So yes, I find, I'm finding struggles with keeping up with the designs of it because I, I feel like I'm not that creative or I, I don't have the patience to make things look nicer in terms of like bullet journaling or things like that. So I tried my best that at the end of last year to set up as much as possible, but I'm running out of space or I'm running out of pre-made templates and things already set up for each month. So I need to spend a, t a day or so and do that. But anyway, <laughs> that's uh, that's not neither here nor there. Is that the phrase? So books read. I read eight books for the month of March. 2,291 pages were within those eight books. Three of those were ebooks, three were audiobooks, and two were print books. So I will, I'll be showing more print books as I'm like showing you what I read because I have the physical copies, but I like kind of alternated between reading the physical copies and audio, but I just said that those were audiobooks instead. So yes, that is that. In terms of what I wanted to read for this month, I read uh, out of two, four, six, eight, eight of those books, I read four of them and was in the process of reading two. So I guess almost six of the eight books that I plan to read for the month were completed. So yes, yeah, so those are the books there. And then I also wrote all my reviews, quotes, things like that in my reading life journal from Ann Bogle. So this has been good to keep me on track with what I thought about the book, like almost immediately when I finish it or a day or so after I finish it so it's fresh in my mind and I remember it and when I go back to tell people like you or like friends or somebody that wants a book recommendation I can have my thoughts more clearly than trying to remember what the book was about or more saying more than just the synopsis I guess I think that's always been my struggle so yes I'll be going through this with some of the books that I've read. So the first book I read was an ebook and it was Small Things Like These by Claire Key. And so this was super quick. I could have probably finished it in a day or so, but this is set in Ireland. It's set back in the day-ish and it's kind of a Christmas story, but thinking about all like, I don't wanna rehash like the, the title of the book, but it really is about appreciating and being the moment and it's about this man who has like a, a young family and they're just trying to like, they're, they're one of, not the wealthier, but they, they do have more money than a lot of their like neighbors in their community. And he comes upon this, a church or like a, a haven for, for nuns and finds this woman that was brought there and it's apparently that was like a big thing in Ireland. They were giving some like facts or it's, it's historical fiction about 
how that was a thing back in Ireland of like women being harbored in like these church settings and how that went on for many, many, many years. Maybe not even just in Ireland, but in like a lot of Catholic churches, I believe. So yeah, but then it's just, I just liked the simplicity of the writing, but there were so many profound things that were they're said there. So that I thought was good. It was recommended to me as part of my 12 books for 12 months Instagram recommendations that that was going along or going around before 2021 ended and folks were able to submit books to whoever posted like hey I'm trying to read 12 books in 12 months for the year 2022 so what does that look like can you help me out so this was one of those books that I picked for there so next I read Once Upon a Wardrobe by Patty Callahan and this was such a heartwarming story it's set in England where these two siblings are really really close and they bond over The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis and the daughter is like off in college and gets to meet C.S. Lewis and kind of learn more about the the world he created because the the younger brother is like obsessed and wants to know like where did the lion come from where did the idea come from and the the younger son is sick so the older daughter is trying to like give this as like not like a final gift but just something to to make him happy not be thinking about his health concerns and health problems so that i thought was absolutely beautiful it's a it is set around the christmas time which i thought was really lovely and i gave it overall a four out of five stars then i read a little life by hanya yanagahara oh boy so this book it's massive first off this took me about two weeks to read and it was very draining. I almost forgot that I read this this month because I don't know, I didn't want to like forget about it, but it was so heavy that I like needed a break from very, very heavy content, plot points, characters, just everything you can think of that is just like traumatizing and like content warnings galore in this one. I did a reading vlog for it. I will post it up above if you want to check that out. I won't go into too much detail here since like I said there is a lot of content warnings and that that dominates a lot of the book. So just in general I I enjoyed it. I don't think it's one that I will reread anytime soon but I did mark off several quotes that I like appreciated or like were very profound and insightful so those I'll probably come back to and maybe some pages here and there but this is like I guess like a triumph in a way because it is it is a lot and I, I think I've said in my the reading vlog that I did that any part of this that you can read like is an accomplishment I don't know like it's there's so much here that it's and it could be something where you don't finish it and that's more than okay so yeah, I think I, in the end I gave this a four and a half out of five. I forgot to mention what this is about. <laughs> this is about four guys that met at like college and kind of like grow up together, many, many decades together and have very interesting experiences, try to get to know each other more as like they grow into adulthood and late adulthood and have like fights and, and celebrations and misunderstandings and traumas and tragedies happen all within but it does center more on Jude and his story and then how all the other guys and other folks in the the story kind of interact with him and like understand him. Then I read slash listened to The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. So this was gifted to me by one of my former students back when I worked at a university and like we talked about books all the time and I can't remember which book I exchanged with him but this was the one that, that he gave me or gifted me and yeah it's about this journalist or like this travel journalist who gets invited to go on like this cruise that only has like 10 cabins so it's very small and it's like an introduction like a launch party in a way for media to go on get the experience to write about it for other people to sign up later to to go on it and she thinks she witnesses a murder next door for the woman in cabin 10 and thinks somebody was thrown overboard so she spends the whole book trying to figure out like who was thrown overboard why and who did that and a lot of the staff and fellow passengers are like are you sure you were drinking you take medicines they're trying to like write her off so she's trying to figure out is this some kind of conspiracy like what's going on meanwhile she has no connection with the outside world there's no wi-fi or internet or, or phone capabilities on this boat so folks and family back home think she's dead and um because there is a body that is found two bodies actually that are found washed up so 
but maybe she does, who knows? So yeah, this I thought was like pretty fast paced and pretty, I guess, typical thriller, if you can say that. Then I read Mr. and Mrs. Fitzwilliam Darcy by Sharon Lathan, and this is a kind of like inspired by Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen novel, so it's not clearly not her story not maybe what she even thought of as like a sequel or continuation of Darcy and Elizabeth, but I appreciate like anybody that takes that on and uses that as creative freedom. So this is like literally right after the wedding of Darcy and Elizabeth and kind of going through like their honeymoon phase, like early stages of them being a couple and understanding each other as Mr. and Mrs. Darcy and what that means for the estate and being a part of society and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's definitely a romance. A lot, lot happening in there that I'm like, I don't know if this would be in a Jane Austen novel, but I, I appreciate some good intimate moments and um, like a romance in that regard too. So that I thought was good, but there is a lot of it. And then that's probably like three quarters of the book is the the intimacy between the two characters. But yeah, I love the throwbacks to what was said between them in the original text of Pride and Prejudice. So that I thought was a good like echo of, of the story and continuing to keep those characters alive. I do wish there were more of the Bennets, like the family, the rest of the sisters in the story and like some of their other friends, but it's like more going into like, okay, this is a new phase what's next for them because they don't really live close to Longbourn where Elizabeth is from. So yeah, I thought that was pretty nice. Then I read Heartstopper volume one and two. So this is a graphic novel and read them on my ebook. So that I thought was interesting. I've never had like visuals on a, um, on an e-reader before, but I thought it was very well done. I've only, so honestly, I read that because I saw the trailer come out on Netflix. So they, I think the show comes out April 24th fifth sometime in late april so that i thought would be cool to watch i love adaptations obviously just finished binging bridgerton season two now i have the viscount who loved me coming out on my libby app and i'm excited to dive into that so it's kind of like reverse but at least for this this is a really cute story of like two boys in high school that start dating one is out and like proud and like popular and another boy is part of like the rugby team and like has a reputation to uphold and they're slowly getting used to the idea of being out. So yeah, it's I think it's a really beautiful story. I think Alice Osman did a great job with that since I read her other book, Loveless. So these are her graphic novels that I am diving into now. I have volume three coming soon, very quick reads, and like the graphics themselves are simple, but like have a lot to say about them, even with with or without the text of the speech bubbles attached to them. So yeah, I can't wait for volume three. I think there's four or five. I don't remember. I think at least four, but I will continue reading them since they're, they're a lot of fun. They're pretty light and it's like I just love the, the different creative approaches of uh, writing a story. The last book I read slash listened to was Tidelands by Philippa Gregory and this was one of the other books on my TBR jar. I should have mentioned that. This Mr. and Mrs. Fitzwilliam Darcy and The Woman in Cabin 10 were the three books that I picked out of my TBR jar. And heads up, I will be doing that again for May. Very excited. So this is set back, oh, I can't remember what year, 1648 in England. And it's like very high times for like chasing down witches and like doing trials, even though England and like Salem are very different, but still the same idea of like, we don't like this, we're afraid of this, so we're gonna like do all these ridiculous test to see if these people, mainly women, are witches. So we're following a family where there's a young mom and two kids and the husband kind of like disappeared. We find out later that he's run off and like is like a drunk and not really doing anything for his family, but that kind of leaves them in a hard position. The youngest son is like pretty bright and gets like really good opportunities to earn more money, even though their family is like kind of like the lower class. The daughter is seeing this I think he's like a farm and his family owns a farm so he's a little bit more wealthy but she doesn't have a dowry so that's kind of troubling so a lot of things kind of conspire there and then the book opens with the wife meeting a priest that is kind of um going against the the current government or like wants the king to come back into power and yeah there's a lot of um kind of like overthrowing kind of stuff happening there but he has to keep his identity secret and all this has a lot of vibes of um, 
the Scarlet Letter in it, and then also like the Crucible. So I think those two mixed together would be pretty accurate to describe this book. So yeah, I thought in the beginning it was very, very slow, but towards the end it was like all these different things happening and it made me sad when there were witch trial kind of elements involved because it just made me think of like, gosh, like these people didn't have a chance. Like there's, there's nothing they could have done and like their community and their family members aren't able to, to help them either. So, and some of them are the ones against them. But yeah, that was this one. Okay, so those were all the books that I read. The two that I didn't get around to finishing this month were The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, and that is part of the March Late Night Book Club pick for, for that time. So I will continue to read that hopefully on the plane. And then I'm listening, listening to The Reading List, which is also a 12 books in 12 months pick. So yes, those are two I didn't get to. I probably will finish them while I'm in London, along with the other books that I'm going to be bringing, probably not all of them, but I need something to read on the plane. So yes, that is that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry, it was a little hectic and a little rushed, but I um, appreciate you watching it. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. Feel free to like this video, comment down below books that you read for the month of March and any of the books that I've read. If you were interested in them, let me know. But yes, thank you again. I appreciate you. Appreciate you being here. Have a great day and happy reading. Mm -hmm.